Drunk Deer is a company that's been making waves in the Osu community. They've been sponsoring plenty of Osu players and creators recently, as well as some Osu tournaments. When I reviewed their most popular keyboard, the Drunk Deer A75, I gave it an overall positive rating. Sure, it may not be as spec heavy, well built, or customizable as a Wooting 60, but it's good for the price and a great value proposition for those who want a very simple, budget mechanical keyboard with a friendly layout and rapid trigger. This is where things get interesting though, because Drunk Tier has come out with a newer model named A75 Pro that supposedly sports better build quality. Or does it? Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Usually when I make a keyboard review I really take my time to test things out, figure out the pros and cons and give you guys my opinion. This time, however, as I was comparing the two models I found them to be strikingly similar, so similar in fact that it will be redundant to make another long-winded review, since I've already done it on my channel anyway. So what I'm going to do instead is simply unbox this keyboard, compare it to the standard A75 and figure out whether the A75 Pro really deserves the Pro tagline. Let's get into it. And there they are, there's the boxes right there. As you can see, the A75 Pro's box is a bit more refined, with a newer, sleeker design and the same catchphrase, unleash your potential. Let's do that. Despite what's on the outside, opening up the boxes we can see that on the inside they're exactly the same. Same quick guide for the shortcuts, same plastic bag containing the same cheap keycap puller and the same braided cable. There is a difference though, the A75 comes with two extra switches while the A75 Pro doesn't. Taking out the thin layer of foam we can see the same plastic dust cover, though it features the Drunk Deer logo on the Pro version. Great. Looking at the keyboards themselves we can finally spot some differences, starting from the weight. The A75 is about 800 grams, while the A75 Pro is 1.1 kilos. I will add fake units for all the Americans out there. The difference in weight is due to the A75 Pro's aluminum case, which feels much higher quality and differently than the A75 doesn't fail the bending test. Understandably so. As far as design goes, there's a red stripe on top with the Drunk Deer logo and caved in USB-C port, as opposed to a flat plastic surface. On the back we have this sort of wavy design, not a big fan of it, but again, no one's going to see it. Drunk Deer logo in the center, four large rubber feet and two flip-up feet, though they are a bit shorter than the ones on the A75, cause the A75 Pro is overall slightly thicker, standing a bit taller on your desk. When it comes to keycaps, the A75 Pro comes in two varieties, either OEM shine through PBT keycaps like the ones on the A75, or, exclusively to this model, cherry profile double shot PBT keycaps. Very nice. I picked the double shot PBT variety and I gotta say, yes you lose the RGB at night, but the legends are nice and clear, thick and consistent. Not bad. Do keep in mind though, the A75 comes in many more different colors and keycap combinations. Plugging both keyboards in, we have the same nice RGB coming through. The A75 Pro comes with the latest firmware pre-installed, which gives you access to their browser utility tool, where you can change all your settings without installing any additional software. On the A75 you have to install the latest firmware yourself. Which is not hard to do, you just gotta download an exe file on their website and run it. But I guess if you're 85 years old and don't know how to do that, there you have it. Let's go for a typing test, grandma. As you can likely hear, the A75 Pro sounds a bit different. This is due to another change, the addition of two extra layers of silicone padding on the inside. They give the keyboard a slightly deeper sound signature and reduce the overall loudness by a little bit. I was surprised to see the stabilizers look different between the two models, and while it could just be different colors, they're definitely much better looped on the A75 Pro. They sound more pleasant, feel smooth, and are not quite as rattly, especially on the spacebar. 
As for other build quality shenanigans, the knob is exactly the same between the two, though it feels somewhat softer, less snappy on the A75 Pro, almost as if it's a bit loose. I don't like it personally. On the other hand, I'm very happy to report that one of the major issues of the A75 has been addressed. For some reason, the switches on the A75 sit very tight in their plate. It took a lot of force to take them out and a ton of time to put them back in. Absolutely infuriating. On the A75 Pro, not a problem. It's not exactly worthy of praise, since I've never had this issue on any other keyboard, but it's nice to see that they fixed it. So far, it seems to be a smash hit for the A75 Pro. It's more solid, well built, sounds better, feels better. So how is it for Usu then? Well, things get weird. They get weird fast. As I said earlier, the aluminum case makes the keyboard heavier and sturdier, which is a good thing but at the same time, its surface becomes a lot more stiff. This is all subjective of course, but I find that tapping on harder materials like this really drains your stamina much faster, and to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of it. It can work if the keyboard is thin like the HyperX Alloy Origins for example, but when you have this big block of aluminum, not so much. I had a similar problem on the Wooting Uwu, where the normal version and its plastic base felt nice, soft and comfortable, while the brass base made it way too hard and stiff for my liking. No one likes hard, stiff, thick things. They like short and thin. Let's move on. If I had to rate Osu keyboards purely based on their materials, I'd probably put high quality plastics on top, like those found in custom keyboards or wooting for example. Then I'd have normal, consumer-grade plastic like most keyboards out there, and lastly, aluminum, brass and all the other hard materials. Once again, this is my subjective opinion of course, maybe I'm just an old man with fragile fingers nowadays, but before going all in, I suggest maybe trying one first to see if you like it. Maybe you have a friend who's into custom keyboards and has a custom build with an aluminum case, Maybe a friend of yours already has the A75 Pro and he can let you try it. I know I'm assuming most OSU players have friends, but surely you guys do, after all you're subscribed to this channel. Are you? I'm gonna be honest with you. When I was unboxing the A75 Pro, I thought it was just a reskin. Same keyboard, different case type deal. But I have to give credit where credit is due. They did improve many things, and overall it's a much better keyboard that's good for general use, typing and gaming. I have some issues when it comes to OSU specifically, but you may not have the same experience. When it comes to price, from April 15th to May 15th, Drunk Deer is running a 15% sale on all keyboards on their website. Here's the thing though, on top of that you can also use code SPAZA at checkout for an extra $10 off your order bringing the A75 just over $100 and the A75 Pro at $110. It may seem obvious to suggest the A75 Pro, given its improvements. However, it really depends on whether you like the stiffer feel of it. Between the two, for a budget rapid trigger keyboard, I personally still prefer the standard A75, despite all of its shortcomings. For those of you who are willing to spend a bit more though, the Wooting ATHE is now available for pre-order, and I'm not gonna lie, it looks good. You got different keyboard layouts available, two styles of that high quality plastic I was talking about, zinc alloy which is pretty intriguing, as well as more advanced features along with some new ones. I will review the Wooting ATHE on my channel of course, so if you guys want me to also compare it to the A75 and the A75 Pro, let me know in the comments below. Whichever keyboard you end up choosing, I leave a link to all of them down there in the description. They are affiliate links, so if you buy either one, you are supporting me as a creator for no extra cost. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to leave a like, leave a comment down below to let me know your thoughts, and if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe. Again, this wasn't an in-depth review or anything, so if you want to know more about this keyboard, I recommend checking my full review right here. Thank you, and I'll see you all next time. Have a good one, guys.